Hey, it's Dr. Charles, a.k.a. Coach MD. In my over 30 years of medical practice, I've made it my goal to help you create a great life by achieving a strong mind, a healthy body, and an unshakable spirit. What I want to talk to you today about is something that I've been doing for many years, at least 20 years, probably more, and that's intermittent fasting. And intermittent fasting doesn't mean that you stop eating for a whole day. Uh, some people do that and they, they alternate, but uh, this is overnight fasting. And uh, I do that every day uh, where I stop eating uh, roughly around, uh, well, I have my dinner early, preferably before 6 o'clock. Uh, sometimes later I'll eat a snack, but I won't eat past 8 or 8.30, 9 tops. And then I won't eat again or uh, eat again. I'll drink water, plenty of liquids, until 12 noon the next day. And I do that every day, and I've been doing that for many years because I think it's good for me because of the physiology of the human body. The physiology of the human body is this. Our body will cause us to produce cortisol, which is a hormone that causes blood sugar to increase. To, so we have sugar in our brain, which the brain needs. Uh, this is internally. And it will peak around 4 a.m., well, 4 to 6 a.m. every day. So um, that's our circadian rhythm. And what that does is it allows, <clears throat> excuse me, it allows uh, our uh, prehistoric ancestors to be able to get up like that, have the energy so they can go hunt and gather in the morning so they can have their food to eat around midday. And that's the physiology. It hasn't changed. We have it now. So why eat a breakfast? Uh, the, the whole idea of having a breakfast is the uh, most important meal of the day is, is antiquated. Some people still say that, but it's antiquated because we are programmed to have an increased spike in blood sugar in the morning, and that blood sugar is for that energy. So what, what does science say about this now, and, and it's being looked at? Well, this article uh, that was published in Nature in, in, uh, te in September 2021 and is reviewed here in, in uh, Science Daily, is entitled, Intermittent Fasting Makes Fruit Flies Live Longer. Will it work for people? Okay, so fruit flies, uh, Drosophila, uh, Drosophila melangaster, uh, fruit flies. Well, a lot of has been done, and it's easy because their genetic uh, profile and they're, is, is well known. They're very small. They only live in uh, pristine environments for four months tops. Uh, so let, let's see what, uh, what the article has to say about that. Well, the summary is that intermittent fasting is trendy weight loss strategy. A new study of fasting fruit flies shows how the diet, if properly timed, also shows the aging process and increases longevity, slows the aging process and increases longevity by cleaning our cells. Interesting. And I read a story, uh, an article years ago that showed that it also helps the telomeres which are the uh, um, strands on the end of chromosomes, it, it helps decrease their, uh, and, and picture this, a, a chromosome is like a, a shoelace, and the tips of the shoelace are the telomeres, and the telomeres are supposed to protect the chromosome from breakdown, and as we age, they get smaller, smaller, and smaller. Intermittent fasting, this study had shown that it decreases, it slows the rate of those uh, tips of the shoelaces from getting shorter and causing the chromosome to causing fraying as we know when that happens in our shoelace. Well, anyway, let's go on with this article. Whether intermittent fasting is called the 5 to 2 diet or the 16/8 method, celebrities swear that these eating regimens are a great way to lose weight. Fasting is now trendy, but real science backs up claims that fasting 2 days a week or restricting eating to an 8-hour window each day leads to weight loss. Well, yeah, you're taking in less calories. It's it's kind of obvious. And scientists have found inter intermittent fasting has even more health benefits that are not related to weight. Studies in mice and other animals show that intermittent fasting also increases longevity. But for those who want to adopt intermittent fasting to slow the aging process, there is a catch. In modern society, people are used, used to three meals a day, right? Three square meals a day. It's good for you, right? Not really. And intermittent fasting is hard. Can the benefits of fasting be packaged in a pill? A new study of fasting fruit flies by Columbia University researchers suggests the answer may be yes. Hmm, that's interesting. 
The study published September 29th in the, uh, 2021 in the journal Nature revealed how intermittent fasting works inside cells to slow the aging process, at least for fruit flies, and points to potential ways to get the health benefits of fasting without the hunger pangs. Intermittent fasting and time-restricted feeding in general limit food, but not overall caloric intake. Well, it could. It depends on if you're eating in that window donuts, hot dogs, and fast food. Well, then it's not. Uh, to specific hours in the day. In contrast, dietary restriction, which also has been shown to increase longevity, reduces caloric intake. Well, intermittent fasting can as well. Because intermittent fasting restricts the timing of eating, it's been hypothesized that natural biology clocks play a role, says Mimi Shirasu. He's a PhD associate professor of genetics and development at Columbia University, uh, Vagalos College of Physicians and Surgeons, and an expert in circadian rhythms who led the study. Shirasu Hiza and Matt Olg Olerate, a PhD, an associate research scientist in her lab, turn to fruit flies to investigate. Fruit flies have similar biological clocks to humans, staying active during daylight and sleeping at night, while also sharing roughly 70% of human disease-related genes. Isn't that interesting? This small little fly, 70% of human disease-related genes. That's amazing. And that's why they, they may be useful to, be, to study them. Fruit flies are an excellent model for aging, Sarasu Hiza says, because fruit flies and humans age in similar ways. But since fruit flies only live for two months, aging experiments are more technically feasible. Uh, we did these experiments in, uh, in college, actually, not these experiments, but on fruit flies. And I remember in the pristine environments, the maximum lifespan was about four months. So in, in these, they're saying two months. So we know if that fruit fly is flying around your fruit at home, your bananas or whatever, you know, I know we swat them. We sometimes feel bad about killing things in nature, but really their lifespan is very short anyway. So that's how I justify when I smack one of those little buggers. Right? The researchers put their flies on one or four different schedules, 24-hour unrestricted access to food, 12-hour daytime access to food, 24-hour fasting followed by 24-hour unrestricted feeding, or what the researchers called intermittent time-restricted fasting or ITRF, 20 hours of fasting followed by a recovery day of unlimited feeding. Among the four eating schedules, only the ITRF significantly extended lifespan, 18% for females and 13% for males. Let's go over what that means again. It's called intermittent time-restricted fasting or ITRF. Well, that's 20 hours of fasting. Okay, so that's not quite the uh, overnight fasting. And the timing of the 20-hour fast was critical. Lifespan increased only for flies that fasted at night and broke their fast around lunchtime. Goes along with what I was saying, right, about the, the circadian rhythm and how our body is programmed to go give us energy to get up in the morning, to go hunting, hunt and gather and eat around lunchtime. The lifespan of flies that instead fasted all day, eating only at night, did not change. Hmm, interesting. For the researchers, the role of time was a big clue to how fasting is linked to longevity. They found that a cell cleaning process kicks in after fasting, but only when fasting occurs during the night. Well, we, you know, we know that sleeping also is a regenerative process, so uh, sleep is also involved in this, and it helps remove those uh, the, the waste products that our body produces during the day. Scientists call the cleaning process autophagy, Greek for self-eating, and the process is known to slow aging by cleaning up and recycling damaged components, the debris components of the cell. We found that the life-extending benefits of ITRF require a functional circadian rhythm and autophagy, I always have tough trouble with that word, components, Shirasu Hiza says. When either of those processes were disrupted, the diet had no effect on the animal's longevity. ITRF not only increased the fly's lifespan, the eating regimen also improves the fly's health span, increasing muscle and neuron function, reducing age-related protein uh, um, aggregation, and delaying the onset of aging markers in muscles and intestinal tissues. 
Human cells use the same cell cleaning process, so the findings, these findings raise the possibility that behavioral changes of, or drugs that stimulate the cleaning process could provide people with similar health benefits, delaying age-related diseases and extending the lifespan. I know that's a, a, a target of a lot of research, and we're looking for that, that silver bullet, right? We're looking for that uh, holy grail of, of longevity to clean up the debris, to create a pill. But we know that by doing that, it, there's a lot of unintended consequences because once you disrupt one process, others kick in. So it's good to find a way that we can uh, pull upon our own natural body functions to do this. And intermittent fasting seems to help with that. Any type of restricted eating is difficult, says Ogarate. It requires a lot of discipline, and most studies of time-restricted fasting in humans have built in a cheat day to make it more tolerable. It would be much easier to get the same health benefits if we could enhance autophagy pharmacologically, specifically at night. Yeah, right, but it would be easier, but is easier always good? And the source of this is the Columbia University Irving Medical Center, and this was published in Nature. But going back, this is not really overnight fasting, okay, because research is called intermittent time-restricted fasting, or ITRF, is 20 hours of fasting. I mean, that's only eating four hours in the day. So that's only eating from 12 noon to 4 o'clock in the afternoon and then fasting the rest of the night overnight and in the morning to the next day. So that's not quite intermittent fasting, but uh, I'm going to continue doing my version of intermittent fasting, fasting because I think it does work for me. Um, I don't know if it's helped me keep a slim weight. I think that's more... Uh, of what I decide to put into my body and also my exercise regimen. I think that more importantly uh, factors into it. But I think it's the intermittent fasting and not eating at night and not eating in the morning for the most part. I deviate occasionally, uh, but it it's really works for me because, again, the circadian rhythm, we don't need to really eat in the morning. If you're going to do so, eat protein because you don't need any more sugar or carbohydrates because your body is doing that naturally, again, to help you go hunt and gather, which we don't do anymore, but our prehistoric ancestors did. And a lot of our functioning is exactly the same as it was then. So some things to think about. Let me know what you think. Uh, leave your comments. Subscribe and hit the notification button so you get notified when I do post another video. And until next time. Please, I encourage you to stay strong in mind, critical thinking. Always think about what you're hearing. Process it. Does it sound reasonable or right to you? What's your gut feeling on it? So stay strong in mind. And of course, keep healthy in body. Stay strong in body. And most of all, in soul. It all stems from there. Bye for now.